So, uh, you know, I actually did it, did it already, and then, and then it wasn't recording. So, <laughs> second attempt. I think it's actually better now. So, um, I guess I'm talking from the perspective of me and also Tato because it's defensive stuff. So, if Tato is attacking me. So I'm going to maybe mention that what he should he get after, but also I'm going to how, show how I defend and if he's defending. So I'm going to, I'm going to talk about from that perspective and probably something for top also, but mainly that. So here, <clears throat> Tatu likes that grip and he likes to pull. And I will show the sequence and then I go back. So you yank me up, expose my side. And I will, I will see what happens. And now he's gonna get those grips again. I'm gonna go back and show it again. So here, I know it's a good pass. He tries to, you know, lift me up to my side and stuff, and get a pass, or even sometimes land knee and belly. So this is my attempt to make the leg very heavy, to lift. So I'm going to overcompensate. I know what this does because in some cases they can have some loop chokes and stuff. If you would have other other color of this, the loop choke would be you know danger. But right now I'm also controlling the wrist and stuff, so we're all good. So I'm making it super heavy. I know he could you know jump to my back and stuff, so all of those stairs, I know those things. So grabbing his foot, making it awkward to step, and keeping it very, very heavy. See? Keeping it heavy, and he's actually would, if he overcommits like this, he would, I could actually go, um, you know, he ex accelerates my defense, because he has to go away from me by lifting his, uh, lifting, straightening his back. So he cannot be close. So that kind of defense, because he had a choice that would be not better, but different. Because he has a choice to go to turtle, go to my back, or lift me up. So if I want to play guard, I make it heavy. So he has to go away from me, and then I get my legs in. So that, that, that's what happened. He was too far away to capitalize on that. Um, and what else? Let's see, a circle. This is a you know, grilled chicken. I have to keep my knee. I can grab my knee also as a, as a support mechanism. And also try to put my elbow on a mat and shrimp uh, on my shoulder, on my elbows, not not put the leg on a mat. So you will see me. Yes. Yeah, so I cross the leg. So if you cross the knees, that's dangerous because right now, if I would put this knee too close to my other knee, he could jam my legs. But this knee out gives me some leeway if I wa if they want to jam, I can invert more or I can sit up. Uh, so kind of like a you know good position. I don't want to put my legs together. Uh, if he would just press my legs together and back away and push my knees to the mat, I would sit up. So here he clears. I don't use my arms. He gets the grip because it's fun to train that uh, that uh, lifting because not many people are doing that. So I'm I'm letting Tatu to play with those things uh, and to try to pass. So it's interesting for me also. And now I bring my leg in. See. The side is uh, the, I use my elbow here to keep my right side heavy, and I keep my his job is to keep my um, outside leg out or top leg out. I want to bring it in. So one more time, as soon as it lifts, my elbow goes to the mat. I support, and then I have a guard. Yeah, uh, so he's, he has to let go of those grips. So I get my guard back. Uh, I know he has my lapel, uh, yes, so. So I let him have, this is a good pass. Uh, this is, he shin blocks me. See, uh, this is, I, I let my leg to be out. Because uh, if he gets me, my, my knee get, a little bit comes off to the side, from, the, from the chest. So I, I should have, you know, block this, get back to the guard. Or go with this arm, go underhook the um, you know, Tato's right leg. Because I need my structure back, and clearly I'm not using the aim and all those things. So you know, but also now he's passing. So what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna grab his fingers. I'm gonna put my left arm to the uh, spider guard position and prevent him from passing. See, 
And because he's in a wrong side, it's very hard for him to go back to other side and leg drag me because he's already too far. So he hope he maybe his option is to pull my legs to this side, you know, and jam my legs. But it's you know it's hard to do. So, but just the timing of this it was interesting. Also, it surprised me. So see when he's passing, I get to spider guard. You know that's kind of like a here pump. He kicks my he pushed my knee away and right away I had spider guard and I'm also holding the fingers. I don't grab the gi. I think the fingers are, you know, that's, it's debatable, but I really think it's something there, but I use it. It's the fingers are better mechanical grip. Um, yes. So what else? So see, and now I get two, two on two, two on one. So that's, Tatu has been already, I've done to, I've rolled with him before. So I already had this Omoplata set up many times. So he's aware of that now that more i use that a lot in a gi i use mechanical grips in a gi so to speak and i my, my mechanical i mean like a no gi grip grips with a gi friction i don't grab i i i didn't even know where when what, where i would grab the gi i call it cheating like but it's in the right context so that was a good sequence also as a uh, because i pull pull him so he postures up and then i do a you know kind of like a, that simple sweep and then reality, I would have to be like jumping, you know, going after him like a wrestling style. So see it again. And he backsteps and now I have a single leg because he backsteps. He has to usually free the one leg. And then I would have a single or something else. So that was combination attacks. He tries to do the same thing again. See, and that, that grip is super annoying. If my neck would be up. It would it would feel worse, but when I go, yes. So that's the position, and we'll see the sequence, and then I come back. So he passed, I turn away to running man with the elbow post, uh, still I keep my shoulder forward because if this shoulder would be back, he could flat me out, uh, like threaten to flat me out and then I have a, you know, hawkings and baby riches, everything. Uh, right now I don't control his wrist, so that's by choice. Um, and the elbow is there, yeah, so, but I'm looking for keeping this for, uh, forward. You see that more when he's attacking me actually I turn more see and now I'm gonna get this arm see this I'm gonna grab his wrist because his grip is too high at the moment to really threaten me but I'm gonna I'm aware of that and he tries to get my elbow so I'm gonna circle my you know circle my uh, wrist out and it's the this is easier to circle when your shoulders are more parallel to the mat And also the hook is not there because they can actually tattoo, you could uh, have a knee and you could have a grapevine around my leg. You would control more my motion. So uh, this hook is just kind of half shin and you can have a, like a torque push, uh, push this in and kind of lift this and my knee would be in a torque. So it would control me better. I couldn't, you know, do stuff and it's kind of like grapevine hook, I call it, or, you know, super hook. Uh, so we have this uh, and... And also, also from Tato's part, I wouldn't go for, you know, always to, for the neck and stuff. It's, uh, I call it like tele telegraphing everything you do. So, so I would use NCAA um, position, you know, I call them, you know, like positional grips or whatever I call them. And so you can grab my bicep, you know, this arm could grab my bicep here and this could grab my bicep or you don't always have to go for a neck all the time because it's telegraphing. You have to set it up better. But in jiu-jitsu we teach it more so people do it so but for me it's not that hard but i would actually you know use the more neutral grip so to speak attacking wise but more better grips controlling wise so fingers 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 now i sit up i'm a super aware about that hook that, that post but he's in a wrong side to actually attack me with crucifixes it can be a jumpy move but i'm aware of that so i would i would probably shrimp my hips and take it away or maybe land to running man or you know even you know 
walking, running man, or let's say even hawking, yeah, just land on my one, one side. So I'm aware of that. If I sit up right now, I know the post, but the rule is the post is a far is away from them, so it's it's okay. I let him grab my wrist and dominate a bit. And now I just stand up. I will put my two arms on the mat because I know there's hooks and stuff, but he, he, he wasn't in a good position. And, and so I was just, this is, I usually use tripod, like active turtle, but there's also quad pod. And uh, Ben Asker and all those guys have very good videos about it. So you could check it out, quad pod, how wrestlers use it for defensive and how to do it in jiu-jitsu. So it makes sense because all the seat belts and everything else. So you can deny certain seat belts, certain certain side seat belts with a head positioning, and you know you give them a wrong seat belt and all, all those things. Otherwise, just people jump on your back. It's not a totally bad thing, but just you can avoid it because it definitely gives you better base. So active turtle is more like a, there's certain advantages and disadvantages. So and it's very annoying direction from a lot of people that's just standing up. They don't usually expect that. So now. Now, Tatu, you overcommitted. So, see what happens now? See, he grabs the collar, but he's far away. And I will, I easily, see, I will extend him. Now, they, this leg goes to the hip. His arm is away from his body. And then we have a, he already knows what's coming. Here, I'm sloppy with uh, this. I would actually want to have more pressure, maybe different kind of plata, leg positioning. And I don't allow him to roll over me. I push the, and then we have, then we have the rolling. All this rolling is on my side also. How to roll uh, platas out, which over which shoulder. So the, here we're gonna discuss a bit because he tries to do a baby bridge. Then that would mean he would armbar himself. But when he has hawking, he actually gets out. See, elbow goes out. And but the bad thing, bad then, yeah. Uh, bad thing is. Uh, uh, he's reaching see and then you know side control happens and my game is to find underhooks so it comes not very hard to me so if Tato would reach uh, Tato if you hear me yeah if you would reach if you reach over this and then that means you have to drive you have to because if you reach over that knee and that knee is up that means um, like I have I kind of like I it's like a coat hanger, yeah? I hang you and then I have space for under this arm part, like I have right now, see? You kind of like a, this knee has to be on a mat and then you're a higher, you're more higher than this knee. That means you can, you know, challenge that. I think we have to be super bridged in motion that I we will have to put my back on a mat. So now it's underhook and what's, uh, what this role was about also, I will emphasize many times, I will try to teach Tatu uh, also multiple direction escapes because he, he, uh, he gets stuck in one way. So right now I will show you what it is. Yeah, and now it's flat. And now I have Kimura. And now I'm going to shake a little bit so he understands he has, I have underhook. And now he turns, I get another underhook. And now he's out. So let's see it again. So first of all, don't reach, yeah, see, uh, underhook. Uh, so that's, that's in that sense, it's dangerous. Uh, if Tatu would be on his elbow and stuff, he, he would have more chances. And so it's different, you know, it's not always bad, but he has to be higher to do that. And what he could do actually, he could arm drag me. So Tatu's arm could be around my elbow. Because if Tatu, your arm could be deeper here, you would jam my arm under underhook. Underhook would not be that strong if you're, on, if you're overreaching my leg would be deeper. Also going for a grapevine around the shin bone. So anyway, uh, you could grab my elbow because you're clearly late and you could arm drag me. See, right now you could grab my triceps and you could pull that elbow of yours over the head to the mat and do like a wrestling front headlock, you know, hitchhike escape. Basically, yeah, you would go to Hawking and then get out. Uh, you do it one more time some other places. I will, I will explain it more. So right now you're stuck. So this should be already Hawking and everything else. And why not posting here and get your head out? 
but you don't notice that I have a kimura and everything. So, and the hooking would be elbow to the hip, head should be here, and then elbow come, would come out. You, you should circle. And on my side, I haven't talked about the circling that much, but we will add uh, for a Jato Jiu Jitsu rolls, we will add also circling stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna shake so you understand you have a underhook. And what you do now, you give me another underhook. So that's the funny part. Uh, and now, because I would just say, just, you know, get your elbow out, just baby reach, don't reach, don't try to hunt my legs because it's you know, whatever you, whatever the reason was why you were reaching, just baby reach and, you know, or just hawking, just get out elbow and just survive. But people have tendency to reach and then you go on the hook again. And then I'm gonna, now you're gonna do the right thing. You're gonna circle and get your elbow on a mat. So because it's, look, when you do this again, you kind of want to reach to my legs or something. I don't know what you want to do, but it's too far away. And so that wasn't the right decision and then baby reaching and stuff. So I wouldn't push too much with the bottom arm, kind of dangerous sometimes. And now he's trying to do a stiff arm. So stiff arm, I would say, uh, let's, let's see the sequence. So I will, I will, I will, I will rewind and so I'll explain what's uh, what's happening here so yeah so let's do till that so um, stiff arm but that was you chose to pull the elbow under not bad. I will actually talk about this situation on my site when the stiff arm escapes, so check it out. Because you have to do invert here. See, I'm, I'm, I don't wanna, if you would go, go, if you would have started with a baby bridge here and stiff arm baby bridge, <coughs> stiff arm baby bridge, elbow over the head and stiff arm on your elbow post and sitting up, you know, that's one way, but I was, I guess, leaning towards you, so you do the stiff arm. See, right now you actually had the option to go to elbow, but you chose this. So right now it's uh, rolling, rolling over that shoulder inwards, like you would do in our platas, and you would end up in a baby bridge after that roll. Yeah. Also, what could happen is your right arm is uh, your right arm, yeah, is here. You could have uh, use a reverse underhook uh, under that uh, hip, and you would go scoop out like other side, so your head would be here and legs would be here in your baby bridge, like a reverse underhook. So you have that many options. You chose to go to knees, not bad. But I'm leaning forward and then you, oh, your arm is stuck, see that? I'm just trapping your wrist a bit. So, and also what you could have right now, because I'm pushing you down, this is the, this is the time you would do that reverse underhook kind of thing from here, because I'm pushing your shoulder back. And uh, you cannot, it's harder to like, um, you know, to fully invert, but you can go like in and then baby bridge. And you go to your knees, but I think your base was off. Uh, your base was off because you have to look at towards me, your knees has to be wide, blah, 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 all the turtle stuff. And I tilt you. This is actually good. You slide down. This is all the, you know, Solar Ribeiro information, all those things. But I think you get greedy again because I have controls. So just maybe just get your elbows in and just turn around and get to a turtle top. Not reach because then you give me stuff. Reaching is not bad, but you have to know why you reach. I think I'm going to hunt here Kimuras on my platas. I'm not going to get it. But that's why reaching is dangerous. Because reaching means this leg my leg has to be between your legs, then you can have an over underpass. Because if my knee is up, there's a sweep also happening there, you know, there's a lot of things because I get a coat hanger your elbow here. So because I can pull this armpit down and your head will be still lower. So so that if you like to turn around like this, um, you would have to get over my knee, see, and then this kind of over under stuff you want to do then it's better otherwise I will attack you so uh, some grips I'm grabbing fingers probably 
Spider Guard 2 on 1. And now Spider Guard again, yeah. So right away this leg goes in, Spider Guard, see, and he cannot, he's throwing too far, and I push him and he has to off balance, and then he has this. Oh, actually, the nice combination. So here, I off balance him, he has to post, and then it's an exposure. And then some sweep. So what's happening is he said it didn't work. He's unsweepable. Because I did it to him before, so he grabbed around my leg. See? But what's the problem is, Tatu, that uh, your hip is not on a mat. You should be more a hip on a mat, and this cannot be on my hip. Because it elevates you, and it, lean, it makes you lean back. So this knee has to touch the mat. Literally, that side of the knee has to touch the mat. And then you can escape your bottom leg and do a technical stand-up. And I think this, those fingers cannot, you know, cannot point there. Because uh, your finger has to point outwards a little bit. Uh, so, and uh, my, if you do a good unsweepable, this knee should point towards the camera. Then there's an obstacle coming up. Right now I'm using this knee to push you down. And because your toe, uh, fingers are push, pointed that way, and your post is not correctly back, I can bully you here. You have option to go, not you, but you know, I know Sean Roberts in you know, Lloyd Irvin, Brown Belt tournament, whatever it was back in the day. You have option to put this leg over the, you know, over my tie and go like a calf crush. It's one of the you know, dangers here, but I push you, see? And the post is, there's no post. And now what happened to you is I got also underhook. So let's watch it to the end. Because you're gonna reach again, see? Yes. So what happened here is you underhook my leg, but there's a gap in. So here, Tatu, you have a gap because you're not sideways. The gap would be mace because if you're just on both cheeks, the the gap is really straight, and I just put my arm through. But if you would be on your one side, the gap could be could facing could this this angle gap to face this angle. So getting underhooks would be actually harder. So, but you push me up, that was good. So I have to post, see? And now I step back step, uh, because I think you're holding my leg, but I think you should baby rich and just go to the knees. Uh, yes, and now, yes, so this is what I mean, see? You, you, I think I would re recommend you release my legs and move your legs towards that tent and you can drive because right now to drive you would have to have your body here somewhere to drive with the legs. So move the, le move the legs away and you can drive because otherwise you just give me your arm and you can't get them base. So and now I can choose underhook but I think I choose overhook and a kimura. So you can't really, if I say you can't, I, you know, always you can but you know what I mean when I say I can't. You can't. You can't reach like this. So reaching, you, you, we have to figure out a way to fix it. That escape was good. Uh, but what happened is I got your wrist, see? That wrist, I got it. I have a bottom elbow wrist. And then it takes a while for you to change side. Yes, that was good. So what happens here, I have a Kimura. I lift you up. And even from here, you could go like a legs other side, baby rich. You do that later. See now? Now you're already moving. That's a nice move and you get out. But what you do there is, see? Somehow, somehow you reach here. I don't know why. And then I'm looking for that elbow. Now you're going to tuck your elbow here. I'm going to get that wrist. See? Now I have that wrist. My right arm is holding the wrist over here. And that doesn't allow you to go to knees at the moment in this angle. So your job would be also move your head away, even baby bridge, or circle your legs here. The angle will change. But from that spot, it's hard to go to your knees. See, now I'm flattening you out. And you should already be changing sides and stuff that you do later, but you get stuck in one way. See, there's a Kimura also there. Certain things I can attack. You're reaching with that arm. Now you're going to change the side, see? Yes, nice. 
and you have running man, guard, whatever. That was good. So that's the lesson also from this role. I think that you, I think you will see yourself that it's just double, double sides. You know, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, one, two. You know. Now you have a lapel and stuff. I think I give you the single leg X because I'm I'm gonna hunt you on a plata again. I think here, just and then I'm gonna fall. Let's watch that sequence. Very fancy word sequence. And over under, yes. So I'm gonna fall. There is now unsleepable also there. Uh, probably. Uh, so I'm gonna grab overhook your near leg to me. And also I'm controlling the elbow because I'm stubborn here with the plata. My elbow should be actually more back. See, elbow. My elbow should be there's a shoulder. My elbow should be more back, so I'm not tilted. And I have to scoop back because my leg is too deep in. So my leg should be in the armpit. So I have to escape my hips a little bit. So to have more uh, to have more uh, flat shoulders. And I get greedy, and you put your legs to my knee bend, inner knee. So you're gonna like spider guard. And I could, I could, you know, I guess I could fight, because I could switch sides. I could grab with this arm, grab that leg, put this elbow on a mat, turn away, but not right now. So. And also, I know that my leg is there from a plata because I'm waiting for you to get up. So what you did nicely right now is like you jumped right away over that leg, because and also leaned here and jumped with your legs to this side, because if you just come up right now, I would just try to a plata you. Probably also triangle. So see, nicely. That was nicely done. But what you gave me is my shin in it. My shin is in. That's why over underpass is harder. Uh, you go in. I'm gonna control your wrist. And actually, you're gonna, I'm going to use that shin to get my guard back because this is the far leg I'm keeping in. So I think your your bicep is over my shin right now. So if you go even side control, I push you a bit, see? And then I get my bottom leg in and then we laugh. I think I'm going to fix your hair now. Because what I do to you is I'm going to control your wrist because I don't want you to grab my head, you know? So that's why I'm monitoring that. And if you let go of that leg, it's everything is like I'm open, yeah. So I know. And also, what happened here? I think, uh, I think I'm gonna, I missed that first. See now you do something. Yes. So you a little bit see this moment. Uh, this leg, leg is down. This leg is up. And if I would shrimp a bit on my one spot, you could get tilted towards the, that wall. And you would, you know, you have a harder time. I, we will fight for top more. So then, I don't know why you did it, but then you're going to fix it. See? Now you're going to switch your legs more. So that was a balance mistake. And control your, also your wrist, because I know that you're going to, you know, shin block me. But I'm going to also, I'm going to push with that shin you away. You know, I'm not going to pull my knee towards myself. I'm going to extend my shin. And then if you're going to go up, I'm going to get my guard back. See now? Now I'm going to get my guard back. So I'm going to play now Panda. Uh, not really nice, straight, you know, straight legs and stuff. So I'm going to control his arms and we'll see the sequence and then I'm going to talk about it. Okay, let's go more back. Okay, so I'm gonna control his wrist, uh, wrist, yeah, fingers. And the joke is that somebody also in this forum asked about you know head pulling. So we discussed that actually. The answer is to keep your chin tucked, and uh, you know leaning forward and everything. So if you have bent knees, you can lean forward more and you actually use your abs and hip flexors. If somebody pulls, you can actually slide on a mat with your hip a little bit, or fall like me to the hockey. So. So that was that. Tattoo did like we talked about it. So he pulled me back. 
So I fell right away here. In that sense, it's not correctly, uh, but I'm choosing here right now. Yeah. So either I use my elbow to the post and sit up and jam this elbow to my to my hip and sit up, or you're gonna see me going to if I cannot sit up, you go you see me more correct the position and go to hawking, tucking this elbow and pushing this shoulder up and going almost flat but not see now I go to hawking so this is tucked elbow goes out and there's no kimuros so there's knee and belly I guess there but that I don't care and I know he wants to go to mount now so I'm gonna catch so it's easy to catch I know my arm is in danger so I'm gonna play around with that because if he takes the arm bar if I am if I am under his knee band, it, the armbar is not that dangerous, because there's many escapes that try to, you know, I use this to open his legs, so to speak, that he can't have, you know, good squeeze on my arm, so I don't mind that. So elbow, uh, my side is heavy, and so the, he cannot really pull pull my elbow up, and also I'm wrist fighting him here, so he doesn't have like a good control on over me. And I think I'm gonna sit up now. Yes, and we'll see what happens. Then I rewind a bit then. Then I will rewind a bit. Okay, that was a nice. So here, I know he's gonna go to my neck. So this arm is going to wrist fight right away. And um, this is actually not necessary, I think. it's He has a control, so I don't get inside the hips right now. So I take the arm and uh, we go, yeah, we go up. I have options to go to Panda. You know, I have options to stand up, so I choose something. And also I was cross. I grabbed the cross, but now it's pushing me. So I, I lose my balance, so I have to switch the arm. And he got the grip. So now, actually, if his head would be under me more, so he could go under, do like a flower sweep, end up in this side, you know, and it would be dangerous. Right now, I'm looking also into choke more because there's one option. One, some of the options are I can lift this knee up and I can tuck my head under that arm. Some options is I have to lift this knee up and I have to go with the flow. So, yes, so this. Yeah, now the, he's pulling me up right now. So what, I have to turn around, I have to put back on the map. So now I'm going to clear one hook. See, I'm going to clear that. And that, that, that shoulder is stuck, so it's harder to go this way. Not impossible, but harder. And then I put my back on the map because he's pulling with no hooks. See, and now the choke is over the chin anyway. It's not, it's not bad, it's a good choke. And now I have a double under, so I don't turn into the triangles and stuff. And go. Running man. And now, Tatu, you sweep yourself. So your arm got kind of stuck there. You were grabbing. And then I block your shoulder. And then you roll over. So that was kind of like a... That arm should not get stuck there, and you're also have, not having uh, parallel shoulders. You should be more parallel, so you could circle this arm out and maybe around my armpit and stuff, you know, under my armpit, so you could have a more balanced. Right now, I'm just, you know, gonna roll you. I could have roll you here with a cross face and a baby bridge, but I'm just gonna roll you right now. You are nicely you're gonna sh escape the shoulder and turn back in. That was a nice move. Yeah. So again, two on one. Uh, he wants to lift me again. So I make it hard. Lifting up is not bad because lifting could be like if they really lift, I can land them in hawking, and it's still not gonna be easy arm bars and stuff. Like you see people lifting the leg and you know the leg and arm, and they jump to arm bars. I can still land on hawking, and it would be I, I would be pretty strong. So I chose to make it heavy. And then he has knee and belly. It's not really effective in there. And also I have, I think, arm around his leg here. 
So it's not really nice angle for knee and belly and because I'm baby bridging this arm is heavy so it's hard to use to make me flat. And he's not having a good position there. See? I have a, like a arm around his shin bone. And he got it up but it's not gonna be like arm bar danger. See now he escaped. I have to get my underhook back. I would not use tattoo, I, I would not use the head here because I would put I would actually put uh, my, I, I know you have to get underhook, so I would put my head on a mat or keep my head in this side. Uh, there's also a video on the site about, I think it's side control that talks about the head positioning. Because it's, yeah, you have underhook, and now you have to fix your head position. Now here comes the fun thing because I'm, this is what I'm playing around myself right now, mounted triangles and escaping them. And so this is very fun, now I understand them better so to speak and I'm using the same hawking and baby bridge uh, pattern to just get out so that's what I love about those patterns that they allow me to figure stuff out and all the complexity and everything else it makes way more sense so I'm really enjoying the pattern of uh, hawking and baby bridge and switching also left to right between them there's a movement pattern also on the side so he's pinning my arm because I'm sideways and baby bridge, this is not the worst thing. If I would be flat, it would be worse. If that you would put your head on a mat, it would be worse. And also the problem is if I'm sideways like this, I'm, I can attack back because actually he's giving me his ankle. So there's a lot of old school sweeps, you know? I could bump uh, Tatu your with my knee to your butt and I would try to get the ankle and you know, kind of half guardish things or whatever. So this is also dangerous for the uh, pinner if I'm not flat. I know you have underhook, so that's another thing. Uh, so yeah, so the nice tr nice kind of triangle. That will do it nicely, you slide. And then my thing is I'm already moving to baby bridge. See, I'm trying to make that side already heavy. And also, if you would uh, lean more here because you wanna pull, you have to lean with your body. That means I would do like a jab, jab, and cross to this side then, you know? Because right now even I could do baby bridge because I could frame this on your hip. I could, you know, baby bridge away from you, uh, turn my back to this side, you know. So it's always a jab, jab, cross. And I think my arm should be or is on your, on your far hip. So I'm going to bump you forward. The same thing we did, you know, the deep hulker stuff we did. Similar click that controls your motion a bit. And also what we did with Dennis. We talked about the Marcelo style of, you know, stepping over the head when, when a deep half card is there because the hip is really like that attaches you because uh, you cannot fight the wrist because you have to let go here so there's always trade-offs and that's what I love about Jiu Jitsu it's like a it makes sense so now it's heavy it's really hard to lift my head I guess you have a platas and stuff but then I see now the baby witch and it becomes like a it becomes like a, this uh, on a plata roll video I did you land in the same place and now we have a side control, you have a mount, and I think I, uh, you go to knees and then I go behind, like knee and belly, and I go around your, see, I already threatened your knee and belly here. I, so again, I have a, a grapevine over your shin, and then I'm going to bump you forward. And then I'm going to catch your second leg, and now your legs are mine. So I just ruined your position. And here, Tato, I think what you what you could do, you can lift me up here. You could lift me up, and get, uh, your left arm could go under mine under my uh, leg, under my right leg. So you could have the waiter stuff going on. Right now I'm too low. And then eventually I would get my hip close to your hip and I will smash. So you could lift, and this is dangerous now to lift when you're sideways. Uh, I'm just gonna post, post and go away. You have your options, but I think going under me like a little, little bit flat and lifting your legs over your head and it give you access to waiters and all those things. You keep me nicely away, but in some point I get close. I don't know why. Because I know you also have underhook here. 
and uh, you will expose yourself to that. So again, the underhook should not be there. You should lift or let's say move the underhook to this hip or sit up or do a baby reach or I think you right now you let me flatten it out a bit and now you have on, you know. I am off balance because my elbow is, my shoulder is behind my elbow. But so if you could just baby reach, if you baby reach this, you know, this elbow goes even more back, yeah? You change the angle of me falling. And then you have to drive in with the bridge. But now you're flat and I have a Kimura and underhook. And it takes, you can baby reach right now, like you do. And don't turn, just baby reach. And also, you know, when you baby reach, the step over armbar is harder because I have to step over your head, first of all, and that your head is far away, so that makes everything harder because I have to move to the head and that creates slack and you can actually do the arm drag to me again and switch the side like we talked before. So this is jab cross attacks against arm bars. Probably there should be a video about it because I just figured it out. You know, in that sense, that's there, that it would be a nice video to make and show how hawking, how actually how how baby rich hawking baby rich works as a movement pattern uh, and also i think i like to do when you would be more flat i would like to do like a reverse armbar i would put the knee on your shoulder and everything else but i i think if you're not flat it's hard to do so baby rich is a good option here it also jams my underhook so it's not free i don't see i'm controlling with that much but then i'm probably going to say you that you should switch sides see again you could grab my, um, you could grab my uh, elbow, and it literally arm drag me uh, with a baby bridge. Just push, pull my elbow to the mat. My head gets lower if you do that, and your free arm can do a couple of things. If my elbow would be on a mat, you could this free arm can grab my head. So you have those, you know, anacondas, darces, marces situation you see in YouTube. Also, this arm can push the hip. And then you get to guard or right now running man or whatever you want to do because I clearly changed the side also. So let's see it one more time. I think it was in that sense, it was a wrong, wrong thing to do in that sense, uh, because you're so far away, away from my hips that you have to go under again. You know, I would still right now circle, circle, circle with a baby bridge. Yeah, so I think uh, yeah, we have to fix those movement patterns. Yeah, arm drag, arm drag, arm drag, bomb. YouTube. Yeah, and now I think Running Man or something is there. Uh, your elbow is your yeah your. I think overall it's not like you know. Uh, I think you should also use more, right now I'm also upper body, but you should more reach with your elbow here, like baby reach and elbow post and sit up. Um, so that, see, you're going you're gonna to do it a bit, see? But then you tuck it again under you. And this is weird because that's what I do also. If I don't, if I don't get the elbows, I, I grab the wrists. I, like, I call it wrestling. So now I have a, what I have is, a, see, the palm is up. And it's called Sankyo. This is um, Ikkyo, Ikkyo, Nikkyo, Sankyo, Yonkyo, Gokyo. And this is Aikido. Uh, I've done for years. And this is makes your it makes your um, arm weak. Uh, I know you know the Danaher said they they're you know when they attack the back they're using different kind of arm wrist positioning and you know so you can straighten your arms and stuff. This is one of them. I haven't seen many people use the turn the wrist out and it kind of opens up your elbows and all those things. So, Sankyo. Kimura. You could actually do uh, Hawking and Baby Rich again. So, But you turn, try to sit up. And the wrist, I was actually surprised that it was so strong because see, I keep the elbow up. But what you can do actually, you could scoop more down and you know, kind of even Baby Rich and those because I don't have hooks in yet. See, now the hawking is there because your head was free because I lifted. No, I think I didn't expect the tap, but it was a tap. <laughs> this is also what Steven Seagal did. If you watch those 
I think Nico Nico won even. I think in a in a grocery store. I think he does something. He does, uses a sun cue and then just bashes somebody's head. So I enjoy that control a lot because it opens the elbow. Yeah. So uh, fun roll. You know. Anyway, I thought I hope you got something from me. You saw what I do. So you saw what I did against you. So you can do the same things because now I think you understand more what what happened. And also I hope I got to help you a bit. So. And I think it was useful for also our site members to see me roll, you know, you're a decent purple belt, you have a decent competition record. So, and I think that's also important that I show how, um, how I roll against already like, um, you know, color belt. So, so thank you for opportunity. And I hope you got out of, uh, I hope you got something out of this.